Hello, everyone. Welcome to Type Talks. Today, we have our lovely guest, Shannon, and she is the queen of Yay. memes. <laughs> <laughs> and today, we'll be discussing NI and NE together. <laughs> and Shannon, would you like to start us off on the differences between NI and NE, in your opinion? <laughs> oh, gosh. Where do we even start? So NI is about the end goal is like the end conclusion and any is about generating different well different possibilities different different ways of doing something they extrapolate upon information and i is trying to bring it all together yeah it really is <laughs> I wrote a Twitter post on NI and NE uh, this morning, and I thought I'd share it with you all because it's very relevant. So NI is consistency and abstract thought. It's one long line of connections to make sense of a singular context completely. Whereas NE is variety and abstract thought, connecting all the possibilities, creatively combining many ideas cross-contextually. <laughs> Yeah, so NI is more of exploring that singular context completely, while NE is like it, connecting ideas cross-contextually versus NI contextually, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, you guys are trying to find the one central point that connects everything on one subject or just in a room full of something going on where any is looking at all the pieces and going, what could I, where, what else could we do with this? What else could be happening here? Any is looking at all like the what ifs, like, you know, you can do this yeah. and you can do that. These make sense together. It's all remixing ideas. It's like mashing up ideas or as you call it, Shannon, like twisting ideas, <laughs> rearranging yeah. ideas. Uh, extroverted yeah. intuition is all about that. <laughs> You talked about Dario Nardi and how he defines any and NI according to his brain scans. Could you let us know a little bit about that, Shannon? <laughs> not sure. I found this incredibly interesting when I was looking at his works. They did the scan of people who, you know, had Savior NI and people who had Savior NE. And all, both of them had the same thing going on of their entire brains were being activated and like making all these connections, like their whole brains were lighting up in the same way. But NI was operating at a slower, more meditative state, like, like a rate in which it was processing. So it's really slowly synthesizing all those points, all those connections that it's observing. And NE's observing that as well, but it's happening a lot faster. That is so, so incredibly true. <laughs> I've had a friend call extroverted intuition a bunny while introverted intuition is a tortoise. So <laughs> like extroverted intuition is a little faster and it's like a popcorn maker. So any extroverted yes. intuition is, is quicker. Whereas NI is a bit slower on average, not everyone, but mm -hmm. like it, it'll kind of be like a slow cooker. And it, that doesn't mean like slow, like don't get it. It means like they're really sitting there taking their time, like really putting all these pieces together. Whereas any, like they're just instantly seeing it and keep going. Yeah, it's not so, coming to that like synthesized conclusion so much as it's just gather, 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 go, 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 go. Yeah. Extroverted intuition really is gather, 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 <laughs> well, as Dave Superpowers puts it. And in introverted intuition in Dave Superpowers' turn is kind of like organizing, for lack of a better word, perception into this yeah. singular thing. I've seen all this data. So like, how am I going to, what are we going to do with it? Where, how do we like turn this into a plan? Yeah. I think maybe even NI has a focus on unification. So because mm -hmm. it's organizing, it's taking perception and as and putting it in, as AJ Renth puts it, a convergent manner. So it is basically unifying 
perception. That's why it's slower because it needs to like slowly piece together how everything goes together. Any is more like Asia Drenth puts it divergent. So it's like dividing and it's becoming increasing in breadth. And it's yeah. really brilliant in the sense that it connects two or more unlikely ideas together. So they just effortlessly do that. Like I'll talk about something, Shannon, and you'll connect it to Inception or you'll connect it to <laughs> a something about five acupuncture theory or even like another theory that I've never heard of. And then it blows my mind with your creativity. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of an, another difference like that you made me think of. Um, NI goes like really deep on their one subject, like taking in all that SE data, like into the one subject, the one subject or the one goal, like MBTI. I will read everything about MBTI and take all of that in and like put it together into my vision. Where with me, with NE, I'm actually jumping between a few different topics, but I see like that, and intuition is kind of broad and generalized, right? A little bit abstract, empty in a sense. So, but us with our intuitive brains, we kind of naturally like see what parts are relevant and what aren't, but aren't so, I mean, with me as any, I'm not so concerned about like filtering that. I just see it and connect like, here's something alike here. So I use those different subjects and see those like connecting points. That is so fascinating. And you mentioned mm -hmm. something about end goal and NI. And, and I just like to mention how NI has an end goal when it's paired with a judging function. So when it's accompanied by like FE or TE, because NI is singular plus a decision making function, it'll generate like this end goal. But NI by itself is perception. So it's looking at mm -hmm. how to make sense of things conceptually. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, like, you, like you and I could walk down the street and see like an empty space. And I could sit there, you know, for months and think about like all the different things that would go in that space while having no clue what's actually going there. And you'd look at it and be like, they're going to build a house there. <laughs> yeah, if it relates to my and I like what I I'm generally wanting to understand. <laughs> you also mentioned, Shannon, about how any is an experiential learner. So I thought maybe mm -hmm. you'd go a little bit into that. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of an interesting thing. Because NI is one, people who are savior NJs, like have that savior NI, that's always paired with some sort of extroverted decider function. So they have more access to people and like things going on outside themselves in that context. And they are also generating like a lot of their NI from SE that they're taking in. So that's kind of how they pull it with any, especially if you're like savior any, those functions are lower for us. So, and any doesn't exist in time. It's not thinking I mean, we do think out to the future, but we're not thinking how does something like consecutively play out in the future. We're just thinking about possibilities and connections and all that. And the savior introverted decider that goes with that also is not like happen reacting in live time or concerned with, you know, others around it. So we're a little disconnected from that. So despite all our idea generation and all that, we don't always connect things the way they, as to how they apply in reality necessarily. That can still take us a while despite how quick we are. So sometimes it really takes like going out and trying things like this kind of seeking out that novelty and trying things or just having experience before we really understand it like and understand it on a new level like oh this is this is what this is okay i've been thinking about this and now this makes sense and it's not like it's not like se because se thrives on being in an experience for any it's not about being in the experience it's not even that much about the experience so much as 
the thoughts that generate and connect when we're in the experience. It's providing that context that NE is naturally missing. You're not really thinking about like the physical object itself, but the possibilities that spring from it. Yeah, I love that, Shannon. <laughs> what are some differences you notice between us? <laughs> you take your time. I, I mean, I notice that you um, you sit there and take in whatever is happening around you or what other people say to you for a bit and then come up with a conclusion. Whereas I'm just spouting out, hoping somebody responds or summarizing. I do summarize what they say sometimes, but I'm just nonstop spouting um, thoughts, like word vomit almost. <laughs> like I've had a friend call it before, any avalanche. So it's yeah. like when an, any user just has an avalanche of ideas that they send you, and then I get like walls of text. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> like a signature that you guys have because I, I get it from you guys a lot. Um, and actually you sent, it's very brilliant too, by the way, like it's an avalanche of sheer brilliance. Shannon also was talking to me about the differences between mm -hmm. NI and NE through text. And I'll just post that below too, if you wanna read about it, which is what we're just talking about. but said in an avalanche form. So <laughs> if you want to know what we're talking about when we say like any avalanche, you can just <laughs> view the, the yeah. bar below. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad sometimes because I know it's a lot and I know it's intense, but like I'm actually processing as I'm doing that. And sometimes even if I sit and wait and write out a whole bunch of stuff and then pause and like edit it before I send, I'll still send it and be like, ah, oh, but that makes me, there's so much I didn't need to say, or there's so much more like I need to add to that. <laughs> and it just keeps going with my brain. When you <laughs> revisit something, you're like, but I could have said this and I could have said this. Mm -hmm. You're just adding and adding, gather, gather, gather. <laughs> yeah. um, I can even come off as quiet sometimes because I'm trying I'm trying not to overwhelm people or if I know like it's not I can't just talk and talk and talk then I'm gonna I'm still sitting here like thinking of 500 million thoughts wow 500 million thoughts <laughs> um, so I think like with any users by the way Shannon's an ENFP if I forgot to mention mm -hmm. that <laughs> like I find with any users when they're kids their any is often dismissed so sometimes when they're a dominant any user they learn to hold back their any because they know that other people get overwhelmed by it. So they just keep it to themselves. Uh, so I notice that trend with some any users, they just learn yeah. to be quiet because they're not allowed to like rapidly yeah. idea generate because it's received poorly. So that's why they seem quiet sometimes. It's not because they aren't doing that. It's just that like, the, sometimes your environment literally doesn't allow it <laughs> and you're so used yeah. to it. So I have to like dial that down, hide it, and then sit there and like try to come up with basically pull up my demon ST almost. So you get this like very slow, quiet, awkward ST out of me almost. And um, I think I can really throw people for a loop in terms of my typing. Or just because, you know, I, I say things that are insightful, which is kind of a thing stereotyped with INFJs. And well, I'm an INF. I, we all do that. Any can be insightful in its own way, too. <laughs> it touches on the big picture, which is just what intuition does. So by nature, <laughs> it has an insightful quality. And I isn't the only thing in the world that can be insightful. So I agree with that too. <laughs> what are some common stereotypes with any? <laughs> it mix it up with the idea of SE a lot. Yeah. Could you expound on that and how they mix it up with SE? Well, it's not like people who have Savior SE don't think about like abstract concepts and can't enjoy a good philosophical conversation. And they generate ideas as well, but it's not in the same fashion. I mean, 
to me, it's uh, it's obvious because one is very in their body and in the environment and concerned with the environment around them. And I don't mean I don't mean like the global environment. I mean like just the room around them, and yeah. the other has is just oblivious to it. Yeah. That's interesting. It's like SE can relate to a lot of stereotypical inequalities because people mesh those two things together. (laughs) But like the difference is SE is like hyper aware of what's going on around it at all times and Mm -hmm. any oblivious to what's going around it. So (laughs) And, and, and even though they can see different possibilities and ways of doing things, they still are more succinct because of the sensory, like that savior sensory and I find they can often, like we start off when I talk with them, we'll start off having a lot in common. And then over time they get very annoyed with me (laughs) because I can't, because I can't, I can't just get to the point or I'll totally just walk by and miss something. (laughs) It's true. I've also pissed off my fair share of sensors through being (laughs) oblivious to like caring about day-to-day things. So that's something like that sensors really, uh, (laughs) <laughs> kind of judge about me is my indifference to day-to-day stuff I get a little like I don't know I feel a little bad sometimes because like sometimes they think I'm doing it on purpose and I'm not like I think I'm trying to be deep when I'm I'm really not I'm just or poetic or something and I'm actually just asking a question but I'm asking a question in intuitive language I don't know how else to ask it or like they think I'm just like blatantly ignoring the sensory to like be difficult or because I don't care or something and that's not it or I'll know they're asking me something or pointing out something at the sensory and I don't know what it means so like I just end up staring (laughs) because I'm, I'm waiting for more like context or like comparison to show me what I'm supposed to be like noticing or what I'm supposed to like be understanding about what they just told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that communication barrier comes up with like SEO mm-hmm. being very like succinct and like straightforward with what they see, like what it is is what it is, is SE's motto. And then any is like, but what if it's like this? <laughs> like and then like no. the S users like, are you trying to be difficult? Like <laughs> Yeah, so much so. Yeah, but it's just like how our brains are wired. It's like we're kind of helpless to that in some extent <laughs> until we learn how to adapt to another approach. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like those situations should be met with kindness because it's like it's not like you chose to be an intuitive. It's not like at birth you had a selection sh- screen and it was like, do you want to be an intuitive? Or a sensor. It's like you had no choice in that. <laughs> so it's like for there to be grace when you're different than someone because you were born in that way and like it wasn't your fault. And it's also like you have gifts too to bring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think we often, especially before we go into typology and like really get into it for years, I don't, I think we often underestimate how different most everybody else is around around us like every single one of us is a very separate universe that we're interacting with and and some of the things we do look alike but what's actually happening is not the same at all and what they're seeing not the same at all (laughs) wow we're all separate universes that's so beautiful (laughs) so nf of you to say (laughs) thanks (laughs) And it's like, so now we should all respect and love each other because we're all just universes trying to yeah. not destroy and pummel each other. <laughs> but it, it's like deceiving because if you look at the sensory, we look similar. Oh, yeah. Like we all have like flesh Hands and we all and we have. Walk. Yeah, we all walk and we, we all, all need like, food. We all get mad at things, you know? <laughs> yeah. Don't, so put me, like- don't put me in a box. We all do these things. <laughs> 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 yes, even elusive intuitives do normal things too. <laughs> even if yeah, the spirit exactly. is in it, <laughs> yeah, we're, still, we're, still, we're still humans, even if we don't always exist in the normal human realm. And uh, <laughs> that's actually the way like I operate in the world as an NE user is I'm 
sometimes I might probably come off as a little bit like ditzy or clueless or something, but I operate naturally with the understanding and it's connected to the whole possibility thing that everybody, that there is all this separation. There is all this, these totally different universes going on, this whole multiverse that we're existing in. And like, I don't know, Jack, let's find out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I always go in assuming like, I don't know what's going on here. What, is, what does that mean? What does that sentence mean to them? It's like wrestling with multiple possible like scenarios. Cause you're like, it's like this clarity of multiverse. It could be this multiverse or this multiverse. Mm-hmm. So by knowing that it makes it kind of hard to choose. Right. Yeah. Right. I like, I see mm-hmm. all of these like very plausible possibilities of how they could be interpreting a situation or what could be happening and they're all like very equally plausible depending on who you're talking to and you have to like get to know the person or ask a bunch of questions to be like okay they're talking about this and specifically this from this angle like even if everyone agrees oh we're all talking about a lighter and how it is black like that actually doesn't mean the same thing from one person to another even if you're both the same type we all have a different way of interpreting things via cognitive functions or via how we grew up or via whatever it is that makes you perceive things slightly differently. And these small differences accumulate to big differences in perception because over time, oh, yeah. if, if you keep looking at things differently, they'll stack up and stack up and mm-hmm. you're left with entirely opposing views when it was just a little bit different to begin with. So it's yeah. kind of like this. Very good eye of you. <laughs> yeah. So there are optical illusions, right? And you can see like this mm-hmm. photo can be an old lady or a young lady, depending on how you look at it. And I think like yeah. we've all seen those type of optical illusions. But the small difference in perception creates someone seeing a young person and an old person applies for many topics. So it's like, oh, you know, someone being left wing or right wing. What if it's just like that, like that tiny moment of seeing something differently that results in this cascading immense different in, in viewpoints? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. these small differences, they accumulate to the conclusions we see now in people's ideas about things. Big time. Like, I talk to people all the time who have drastically different views than I do, like values in terms of values and like orientations. And I'll find like, so we'll have so much in common, like we'll believe so much of the same things. And then there's just like one little thing that sends them like in the totally opposite direction. It makes you like think about, think about those little things, how much those little things actually matter. Mm hmm. Sometimes I see people acting in animosity when it starts in an innocent place, you know, someone having a different viewpoint from you, it starts from this small difference in perception. And the the reason why I tend to be like kind of slow to react to things is that I know that things have an innocent origin. So it's not like people mean to be evil, mean right. human beings that are like have evil viewpoints, but it's because they had that small moment where they saw things a little bit differently and that resulted in big differences. And to me, that's kind of innocent because they never meant to have a dangerous viewpoint or they never meant to have like something that could be harmful. It's just, it happened to be that way. And (laughs) I don't know if that's like the NF, like, Oh, you know, people aren't bad. It's just, it's innocent. And then it becomes (laughs) a really bad situation. (laughs) Yeah, and you have to kind of like sit there and like filter out like, okay, like my empathy versus what actually needs to happen here and does anything need to happen here? And like, I don't want to have my reaction projected onto this. So you have to like take a moment to like kind of let that settle and sort that. Yes, that's so true. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more differences between NI and NE? I would say NI has goals, NE has targets. <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate so, a bit yes. on that? So I think um, when we get into perceiver stereotypes, we think we just think about somebody who's struggling with executive functioning, and that's not always the case. 
receivers can be, you know, pretty functional, pretty organized. It's just a, you know, that the judger sorts find active comfort in that planning and the perceivers don't so much. I find NI has goals as in it has says, I want to be here in 10 years doing this. And this will be exactly how I get there. And and, and he's like, "Eh, somewhere in 10 years, I'd like to do this. And it doesn't usually have naturally like have that plan so much or that like very particular plan. It's kind of rolling with the punches. Or if it does plan, um, that takes a lot more effort. That's so interesting. Yeah, like I find maybe end goals is a judging thing. Because I think Mm -hmm. that because NI users tend to be judgers, they have these types of clearer intention for how they want to go about things and they're more end product focused. Whereas perceivers tend to roll with the punches, they tend to go with the flow. It's almost like the process is more important to them. So Mm -hmm. they like enjoying that and like gathering as much life and experience and options as they can. Right. Like I noticed um, NFJs, well, they're, they're not necessarily obsessed with routine the way like SI users are they still want to go out and do things but they have a very specific plan and a very specific way that will come out and like play out um with which can look kind of look like they're searching after possibilities or seeking out the meaning the way any is but it's very deliberate and any just wants to stay open you know so that it can keep (laughs) anying like I find I find in order to get stuff done, um, I almost have to, I was talking about this with another (laughs) ENFP actually, we have to like trick ourselves into thinking that we're like cheating or hacking something (laughs) because, because because any likes to figure out different ways of doing things and different, different ideas. (laughs) Otherwise I do not stay on track. It's kind of making it fun for you. So you stick to uh, what you're supposed to be doing. (laughs) Like with my baby ST, I sit there and figure out how can I like write this essay while also doing sit-ups and like talk to somebody. I wonder if that's like TE too, because you're like, how how much can I efficiently do this? Like, how can I plan efficiently to do this? (laughs) Yeah, it, it ends up being a tool for me because TE is so goal oriented. That's what stimulates it. And I'm it, it generate it it kicks in for me when I'm thinking about okay, how can I efficiently set something up or do those different things like like you're meant like you were saying before to any cheat. Wonderful points, Shannon. You've called introverted intuition an an inception before. What did you mean by that? <laughs> So the way I was trying to get in, like, empathetically imagine how it was for you guys, because, yeah, I noticed with INFJs and ENFJs, you guys kind of, like, sit back and take some time before you, like, react to a situation or, like, make assert your insights. And it kind of seems to me like, you know, you have your, and you have, you're always in that NI mode, so it's not like... It's not like you don't have some sort of plan or some sort of idea of a context going on all the time, right? So it's like, I imagine it like a feather, like this, the NI itself, the path is actually like the center of the feather. And then like the SC is all the little like actual feathery fluff tedrils. That's so cool. Right? I've never heard NI <laughs> explained as a feather before. Look, this is Shannon's any in action, <laughs> like connecting it to like symbols of like a feather, like to create a new way to see an eye. <laughs> so when you're in a new situation, you go in and you hear people talk, you're taking in, you know, the environment, the context and taking in what people are saying. And, you know, you're, you've got your brain function doing that. 
it's like connecting which we'll just say these are like the little feathers going up with you um connect, connecting which points they're talking about that are relevant to your ni and you'll use that you'll lock in on that and go okay that's part of my that's part of my big my big trend my big pattern right so i can respond to them in this way in this context and focus on this yeah i would call ni trends and trajectory. So it's looking for that trend, that line of best fit that fits all of the SE experiences. And it's looking at the trajectory that these go in. <laughs> then if NI is a feather, then what is NE, Shannon? <laughs> kind of reverse. <laughs> I kind of always picture like the little SI data is like this little box and then there's like this spiral explosion of that same box in like all different directions <laughs> just going out like there's a, a spiraling a weaving happening we we create these kind of knots these ropes like we'll go out we'll explore a couple different thought streams and then we kind of come back with something interesting that I've I don't see people point out is that we do usually like come back to our main points <laughs> I, but we do then we create this whole knot. That sounds like a uh, chaos. <laughs> chaos is higher order of nature. <laughs> that, that sounds fancy. <laughs> Did you expand on that? Chaos is higher expansion or uh, of mm -hmm. nature? Yeah, I mean, you go outside in the woods, right? And you see, what do you see? You see a bunch of trees, leaves on the ground, vines, twigs, animals running around, animal products on the ground, <laughs> birds in the sky, whatever. And most people wouldn't go like, at least in the context of walking around nature, wouldn't go, oh, this is so gross. This is so chaotic. They would be like, oh, it's so pretty. It's nature. It's not like all the, I, all the things aren't separate. They're all like occurring together but there's an order to it and there's a reason like all these things happen cyclically to reinforce each other and create life and nature but then when you go over to somebody's yard and like suddenly all the stones and and the leaves and the soil and everything is separate because that's human order and i is like natural order it's looking at that whole forest and going like yep this is all working together as it is like in acupuncture, um, which I'm studying, it's all very based heavily in Taoist philosophy. And whoever wrote this was definitely an I savior. And he was very, <laughs> like, took a very pacifist view of like, everything is how it should be. It's, this is what it is. There's a natural order to things. And we need to respect that and not get in the way as much as possible. Interesting. I never saw it that way. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah. How do you know when something is written by an NI user versus an any user? What are some telltale signs? Well, one any will pull from more subjects together. Um, two, NI, you guys use a lot of different words to describe one thing. You guys definitely use several different words to describe like the one central thing because you guys like zoom out so much and go abstract. Like you, you have the concept in your head where you're like, Neh. so you use a whole bunch of SE to describe like the one NI thing. Like a lot of my, a lot of my textbooks in grad school are just incredibly NI. Even like when you look at Enneagram descriptions, it's just all a bunch of different SE words for the one NI thing. And any is like taking that one, concept and just showing it in a lot of different a lot of different other contexts yeah so i guess it seems like the direction like and i is using a lot of ways to explain that one and i idea or perception mm -hmm. whereas like any starts with that si concrete thing and then it expands in any ways like in like all these possibilities <laughs> Yeah. Like, here's all the different places. Here's all the different places you could find this and where it could be used or or viewed. 
Yeah. So it's like you said before, it's like rearranging ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's taking this one spot and rearranging it in a billion different ways. I've heard it described as like you have this one spot and you're shining a bunch of spotlights in, in like different places. You're like possibility here, possibility here of that same SI point. Whereas like NI is trying to explain the holisticness of this NI idea. So it'll like, it's taking all of these different ways to explain this overarching thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, if I explain all the SE, then you can connect all the SE and arrive at this clear NI point like I do. Any and NI users normally confuse themselves for each other, Shannon. So I was wondering in what ways do you differentiate how they come off? I find they can get mixed up. Like sometimes people will, con any people will confuse themselves for NI or other people will confuse any users for NI because, you know, what they're, they're thinking constantly about abstract things and extrovert intuition isn't necessarily an, a, an extroversion that has to do with the immediate world around them or even people. It's not people oriented. So it feels it feels more introverted, even though it's so energetic and extroverted in its orientation. They know that they have an intuition. So they'll start to see, like, they'll start to think, oh, like a very intense inner world, introverted intuition, right? And even when you talk to another, when any and I talk together, like, they really can start to bounce off of each other and think a lot of the same things or come to similar conclusions mentally. But at the end of the day, NI is like synthesizing and all its information and trying to create this accurate foresight of what's going to happen. So it knows what to do. And NE is just trying to generate, extrapolate upon any known information and create new avenues of ways to go. Cool, <laughs> Shannon. You also said like any appears more scattered brained and like how do they appear? Like what is like the obvious differences, like the really obvious differences between any and an I? Yeah, for, I mean, even when we're talking at a normal pace or kind of quiet, we're still very scattered in our thoughts and our reactions. Our speech pattern is still very and um, it'll it'll just keep going and going and going and going. Where NI wants to be more concise and is naturally more organized. It'll even stop itself if it sees the stream of where it's going <laughs> and go, oh nope, nope, that's not what I wanted to say. Hang on, we'll just can be kind of similar. I see TI can do this, but obviously NI has a different focus. It's looking at where its stream of intuition or communication is going and can stop and self-correct or take its time to get that information out. What do you say? <laughs> I guess the differences I see in NE is that it is more scattered brained. It's more indecisive and it's more, it takes longer to choose and it, it like, it remains open-ended on purpose. So sometimes okay. it likes to like keep the possibilities in the air at equal tension, which um, NI will just like, they'll pick one and I will just want to like funnel down the idea. Like they won't want to keep it open-ended. NI is more looking for clarity. So it's, they're not generating possibilities, but it's more of a, trying to find as much clarity in the perception as they can. They're more focused, I guess. Yeah, for sure. You guys can see more removed because you're not focusing on like the sensory and data, but it's still very focused and clear in where your words are going and where your, your ideas are going. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it gets to a certain point, like NI is pinpointed, targeted, or it, it is intentional. Yeah. And with NI, like you guys just seem to know, like you guys just, it just happens, like you just know. It's there, you take it in, and then you just know, and you know where you're going. 
any like we can get our act together it just takes longer like back when we were talking about the Dario Nardi scans he discovered any doesn't have a natural flow state that's why it takes us a while to like figure out what our thing is and like go in a direction we have to like manually repetitively which we don't like to do because novelty we have to do something some sort of habit some sort of skill over and over again until it becomes like a state of like a flow state for us and becomes cool. an avenue that we can like actually any start to stream down like a more <laughs> path, but it's still a pseudo NI. It's not, it's not that it doesn't come naturally. Not to be oddly specific here, but if you met an ENFP and they thought they were an INFJ before, how would you know that they were an ENFP? There is a lack of what I, kind of term on my own, like the NI echo chamber, the summer, the summarizing. When uh, I talk with an any user or someone with that like extroverted perceiving function, there's a pinging back and forth. Like you see me exploding with my any ping, 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 ping. And I'll go, oh yes, ping, 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 ping. Um, Or even if they don't aren't there with me while chatting at the time and like come back to it, they still like reply to everything like bit by bit and ping back. Whereas with NI people, like when I message you, I'll have a whole string of like my NE pings. Ping, 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 ping. <laughs> and you'll sit there, you will take your time, sometimes even take a few days to like take that in when you've got the time and then give me a whole summary of what I just said, like in one <laughs> concise sentence. Like you'll affirm it and say like something sweet and polite like yes I see your point this and this is a whole summary and then you direct the conversation from there like based on that flow (laughs) very very distinct yeah and you called it like a conclusion echo so it's almost like I'm trying to sum up the gold nugget in what you said and then echo it back to you to see if that was the Mm -hmm. message that you were trying to send me yes because you want (laughs) to have that conclusion you want to you want it to be clear You want it to go somewhere. Yes. Um, Yeah. And I would say NI is a perceiving function. So conclusion might be an odd word to associate with it, but it's kind of true in that NI, when you're saying something, is trying to get that main point. So it'll go like, so this Mm -hmm. is the main point, right? (laughs) Yeah. And then it'll have this very distinct way of seeing what you're trying to get at. Um, Whereas NE will just ping back with you and it'll be like this continuous like faster and faster ping together or something (laughs) yep (laughs) very much so amazing (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much shannon for coming on type talks and dispelling your amazing any insights in this specific episode i'm so grateful to be your friend and to like discuss type with you so much shannon has her own youtube channel so i'll link it below too i've made some videos to help her kickstart her channel but she's gonna make some individual content too (laughs) on five element acupuncture and how it intersects with typology. So yeah, stay tuned with her. (laughs) And if you like this video, like and subscribe. And thank you so much, Shannon, for being such a lovely guest. Uh, You have such like creative ways to put concepts. Like I never thought about SE and NI like a feather before. So like, thank you for broadening my ideas and (laughs) broadening my world. (laughs) You are like amazing. You are fantastic. If you made it this far, like you have an amazing attention span (laughs) or like dedication to the show that is admirable. So like, thank you a million times too. Yeah, I'm just so happy to talk with you all and to talk with Shannon about all these things related to type. (laughs) Thanks for having me, Joyce. Yeah, I'm so glad. (laughs) Bye, guys.